Hi, I'm Randy Abrams, Senior Security Analyst with SecureIQ Lab, the leader in independent cloud security product validation. When OpsWAT approached SecureIQ Lab to perform a test of their content disarm and reconstruction product, known as Deep CDR, I was very eager to break it because that's what testers do. Being quite familiar with CDR technology, I knew this was not going to be at all easy. CDR is a very powerful technology. It's not new, it's not proprietary, but getting past it is really difficult because there is no reliance upon detection. Conceptually, here's how CDR works. You've got a room with a ton of money in it and no bad people are allowed in it. If you rely upon detection to keep the bad people out, you're going to fail and lose a lot of money. The elegant solution is just keep everybody out and that way you never fail. However, you don't have any business continuity either. So what you do is establish near bulletproof processes and policies that end up only allowing heavily vetted people into that room. CDR inspects productivity files to see if there's anything that has the potential for harm, such as macros, formulas, embedded files, and so on, and then removes them because these objects have the potential for harm. It doesn't mean they are malicious. As such, there are no signatures, there are no heuristics such as AI or machine learning. Identification is irrelevant to the technology. Additionally, the concept of false positives does not and cannot exist because nothing's being detected. As robust as CDR is, it requires exceptional manageability in order for IT professionals to balance business continuity with security. Security practitioners are all too familiar with being forced to make dangerous security compromises in order to maintain business continuity. Efficacy and a high degree of manageability are essential for any CDR product to be useful in a business environment. The management console for OpSWAT's deep CDR implementation performs this job flawlessly. Due to the extensive granularity of OpSWAT's management console, risk management can be tuned to suit any level of risk tolerance. This is accomplished through the use of customizable policies and workflows, as well as a high degree of extensibility. That is an important point. In order to test the efficacy of OpSWAT's deep CDR technology, everything must be evaluated in the context of policy, and that goes for all CDR implementations. So if I allow all macros to go through and a document that's infected infects my computer, that's the policy I chose. However, if I choose to block all macros or if I choose only to allow digitally signed macros that have trusted certificates to get through, I've much better balanced security with business continuity. In testing OpSWAT's deep CDR, we used a variety of files such as the old binary format Office files and the current ODT standard Office files. We used PDFs, HTAs, ZIPs, and some other files were tested as well. In addition to the common types of malware, we created our own malicious files, and we also used APTs that have been used by nation state sponsored actors such as APT29 Group. OpSWAT's product is called Deep CDR because of the extreme level of recursion the product is capable of. During testing, an APT was put inside of a zip file. The zip file was then embedded in a PowerPoint file. The PowerPoint file was embedded in a spreadsheet, which also contained an image that contained steganography. Yes, Deep CDR can eliminate steganography. The spreadsheet containing the objects was then embedded in a Word document, which was placed in a 7-zip.gz file. Deep CDR recursed through every layer, disarmed all threats, and fully re reconstructed the files. No functionality of the clean files was lost, and the picture that had contained the steganography had no visible loss of fidelity. The way to cripple many security products is to throw a zip bomb at them. We use the zip palm of death. When fully decompressed, there will be several petabytes of data on the drive, if your drive is that large. OpSWAT's management console provides three means of dealing with the zip bombs. First, 
you limit how many layers of compression it can it will recurse. Second, you limit the number of bytes of data that are able to be extracted. And third, you limit the number of files that can be extracted. By using these three constraints, you can make sure that zip bombs don't do a denial of service on your system. The zip bomb of death has no malware in it, so I placed our deeply recursive sample with the APT in it into a layer of the zip bomb of death that fell within configured policy. The malicious file was perfectly disarmed and policy prevented the zip bomb from wreaking havoc. Despite a number of easy and very complex attacks against the products, including the use of polygots, we were unable to break the product. We couldn't get anything past deep CDR. Although deep CDR is deployed at various places in an enterprise network, file-based email phishing attacks are among the most common causes of breaches. Our testing demonstrated that DeepCDR was able to neutralize file-based threats, including those in phishing attacks. This also applies to links in email. There's an old joke that I don't have to run faster than the lion chasing us, I just have to run faster than you. Well, an enterprise that employs CDR is running a lot faster than an enterprise that doesn't, because the enterprise that doesn't is the low-hanging fruit, the easy target. Secure IQ Lab found that OpsOt's deep CDR not only couldn't be broken, but that the granularity of configuration provides a level of risk manageability that gives IT practitioners a much needed boost in their ability to safely and comfortably maintain the difficult balance between security and business continuity.